I'd like to welcome you today as we celebrate this Mass for the fifth Sunday of Lent. My name is Father John Kirk, and I'm the pastor of Holy Cross in Duet, and we're all pleased to be with you this morning. So let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, God calls us to remain faithful in order to know Jesus and the joy of the resurrection. Brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, Consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. 
For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on how faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to by his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have been indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again at the, in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and he taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise dear Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus reminds us today that we need to keep faith, that we can't waver, that we should not look back. And we hear that same message from Paul today. Don't look back on what happened in your past life, meaning the sins, the doubts that you may have had. Imagine where Paul would have been if he was able to continually look back but yet never able to look forward. Remember, he was one who was going to kill Jesus before he had this major turnaround in his life. He would have been paralyzed if he never continued to move forward to salvation. After all, that makes perfect sense to us, right? That's what Jesus comes to us for. And as we are looking now at the beginning of Holy Week, within a week away, we need to start moving our minds in that idea that we are looking forward to something, not looking back. And yet we have this tremendous time of trial and tribulation to go through. 
We're going to see after Palm Sunday, we're going to see all these things begin to unfold that lead ultimately to the death and ultimately to the resurrection of Jesus. We're always looking forward. We're a people of forward vision, but we have to let go of the sins that we commit to be those people. It seems like Lent would be an odd time to talk about that, when it's a time that's wrapped up really in being able to reconcile ourselves to God and get rid of those sins, but indeed, that is what we're called to do so that we can look forward. Because as human beings, we do need forgiveness and we do need reconciliation, but not only with God. We need to do that with and for each other as well. If you're like me, there are many people that I have annoyed over the last year or over my life that I need to apologize to. And there are people indeed that need to apologize to you as well. And yet you need to apologize to them as well. Do we have the courage to do that, to look back momentarily and clean that part of our lives up before we look forward to the resurrection? You know, so often we hold what is deep in our heart and we never move forward past that. And it becomes a weakness to us. And yet somehow, at times, we may glory in that, in the fact that we are holding on to those past hurts. Jesus does not do that. He forgives those who have hurt him, knowing that he is going to his resurrection and that he is doing it for us. My prayer for all of us and our wish during this fifth week of Lent is that we have the courage to look back momentarily and ask for forgiveness of God if we have not done so. And think about those that we have injured. Offer forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Offering and asking for forgiveness are the keys that Jesus teaches us. That's how we live as Christ is taught. When we do that, we'll be prepared next Sunday, Palm Sunday, to be able to walk with Christ, to be able to say that we do look forward to a resurrection that we cannot gain for ourselves, but that only Christ can deliver for us through his death and his suffering. My friends, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. In confident faith, let us pray to the Father, who, through the suffering of his Son, has saved us. That by a faithful observance of Lent, all Christians may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the Lord Jesus may bring to repentance those in most need of his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are discriminated against and victimized may receive true justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be ready to practice compassion and forgiveness rather than to accuse or pass harsh judgments on others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and homebound 
may be blessed with the fullness of God's healing spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may reach the perfection that comes through faith in Christ. Today, we especially pray for Joe and Joan Simonetta. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, with contrite hearts, we offer our prayer, knowing that you will always answer them, because we pray as members of the body of your Son, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with praise and glory of his name for our good and good of his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from the disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you through passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Of the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, Thank you. Michael. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, and whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone.